Today we're looking at Thomas Paine and Common Sense. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. After the opening shots of the American Revolution at Lexington and Concord in April of 1775, the American colonies were kind of thrown into limbo. Uh, many Americans wanted to remain part of Britain, those were loyalists, while others insisted that America should declare independence, that would be patriots, and then there were others that simply wanted to be left alone and didn't necessarily have an opinion or couldn't really decide what the American colonies should do. The Continental Congress had begun organizing the Continental Army to possibly fight the British, and the Congress had also attempted to keep peace with Britain, yet no one really knew what was going to happen next. So it was in this environment of uncertainty that Thomas Paine published his pamphlet, Common Sense. It was called a pamphlet, but it had 49 pages, so basically a short book. This short writing would ignite the colonies into a fever for independence, but before we get into Common Sense, let's take a look at Thomas Paine. Payne was born in England in 1737. Uh, in England, Payne bounced around from job to job, but never stuck with anything for too long. One reason he couldn't keep a job was he really enjoyed arguing politics and questioning those in authority. At one time, he was a tax collector and was then fired from that job for writing a 12-page pamphlet arguing for higher pay for tax collectors and handing it out to members of Parliament. In September of 1774, he was introduced to Benjamin Franklin by a friend. Franklin was quite intrigued by Paine and his ideas and suggested that he move to the American colonies. So in November of 1774, at the age of 38, Paine sailed to America, arriving in Philadelphia, barely surviving the trip as typhoid fever had broken out on board and it took Paine six weeks to recover once in America. Once in the American colonies, Paine became a magazine editor in Philadelphia. It was while living there that he began to see the American culture that was forming and began to understand the American calls for representation and independence. So Paine began to work on another pamphlet. Since he had lived in England and basically had lived directly under the thumb of the king and parliament and had lived in the American colonies and saw their struggle, he believed that he had experience that gave him credibility in addressing the political issues of the day. The only problem is no one would publish the pamphlet that he wrote because it was treason. I mean, the pamphlet clearly questioned the power of King George. But in January of 1776, a printer in Philadelphia agreed to print it. It was titled Common Sense. He called the pamphlet Common Sense because he felt all the arguments he made in it were just that, common sense. However, Paine remained anonymous as the author for obvious reasons. Immediately, the pamphlet began selling with over 100,000 copies sold in the first three months. It was being read by virtually everyone, and everyone started speculating as to who actually wrote the pamphlet. Many thought it was Samuel Adams or even Benjamin Franklin. Common Sense made arguments that were different than previous arguments against Britain. For years, colonists had been upset about not having representation in Parliament. Remember the whole saying of no taxation without representation? Well, Paine, instead of focusing all of the blame on Parliament, really went after King George and the whole system of monarchies. Paine argued that the system of rulers being given power simply because of heredity or being born into a family was absolutely ridiculous. Basically, he was borrowing many ideas from other Enlightenment scholars, but he argued that, that people should hold the power, not the monarchs. Paine even had radical ideas at the time, like men who do not own property should be able to vote. Adding to the popularity of the pamphlet was the fact that Paine wrote it in a very plain language that all people at the time could understand. Although today it may be difficult for us to understand all of Paine's wording and writing, at the time it was very simple compared to others that were writing on political topics. Common sense was the equivalent of really throwing a match into a bucket of gasoline. It literally set the colonies on fire for independence. Those who had been uncertain about whether or not the colonies should declare independence were now completely in favor of declaring independence and, and were patriots after reading Paine's arguments. Paine's pamphlet would go on to sell over 500,000 copies, and Paine would be a strong supporter of the American Revolution and even wrote another pamphlet called The American Crisis in late 1776, trying to inspire Americans to fight in the Revolution. After the American Revolution, Thomas Paine went on to be a big supporter of the French Revolution and wrote more political theories arguing for people having the power and not monarchs. 
Payne definitely deserves recognition for his contributions to American independence, but it's it's interesting to see how later in life he became very disliked. He had always been kind of a troublemaker, and he had disputes with George Washington and many others in America and spent many years abroad in other countries, but eventually came back to America in 1803. He died in New York City on June 8th of 1809 at the age of 72, and it's said that only six people attended his funeral. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.